In this video, I'm going to show you how to hack any model of 3DS system using the Easy Flash Parallel. The Easy Flash Parallel is the newest DS flash card to hit the scene, and with it is a number of interesting features like native NTR boot support, so you don't need to use NTR boot flasher to give this flash card the ability to hack 3DS systems. It is there right out of the gate, and you don't have to worry about any of that extra flashing stuff. Like, it's really convenient and makes hacking 3DS systems a breeze. And in this video, I'm going to take you through the steps on how to do so. So essentially, this is a video guide of the 3DS hacks guide page. So if you're interested in following along with that, you can find the link to the written guide in the description below. If you are using a different flash cart besides the Easy Flash Parallel, NTR boot steps are also included in that for different flash cards so you could flash your flash cart into NTR boot mode. But let's go ahead and dive in. Now as we begin, there are a few physical items we're going to need, the first of which being a 3DS system we want to hack using the Easy Flash Parallel with NTR boot. So this could be any model of 3DS system, this could be a new 3DS, old 3DS, 3DS XL, new 3DS XL, 2DS, and 2DS XL. And then of course an easy flash parallel. A screwdriver to remove the back plate of a new 3DS if that is what you're using so you can access the SD card. A method of reading SD cards on a computing device. And then a magnet to trigger sleep mode on 3DS systems. Not needed for the 2DS since it has a sleep mode switch, but you can test the magnet by holding it over the face buttons, and if the system goes into sleep mode, you know the magnet will work. But step one, power off the 3DS system. And once powered off, go ahead and remove the SD card and get it connected to a computing device so you can transfer some files onto it. So I already unscrewed mine, and we're just going to take this out. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and get this hooked up to my computer. Now over on your computing device of choice, we need to download a few things. The first of which being the latest version of Boot9 Strap. So 1.4 from Skyers M. So head to this link in the description below. Grab Boot9 Strap 1.4.zip. Next, we're going to download the Safe Boot9 Strap Installer version 0.0.7. .0 so just grab that one as well. Again, link in the description below. And finally, we're going to grab the latest version of the Luma 3DS custom firmware. So just grab the Luma 3DS zip file here. Again, link in the description below. Once all three are downloaded, go ahead and get them extracted. I like to use 7-zip and the extract to slash command here because it'll make a new folder for each of them. And there we go. But once these folders are ready to go, go ahead and open up the SD card to your 3DS. So just like this, you'll see Nintendo 3DS folder here that shows you are in the right place. So we're going to open up the safe boot nine strap installer folder first, and you'll see safe B nine S installer dot firm. Copy this into the root of your 3DS's SD card. And once it's there, rename it to boot. So it'll look just like this. Now open up the Luma 3DS folder and copy over boot.3dsx to the root of your SD card. Now we're gonna make a new folder and name it boot nine strap. Now go ahead and open that folder. Now inside the boot nine strap folder, you'll see boot nine strap dot firm and boot nine strap dot firm dot SHA. Copy both of these into your new boot nine strap folder on your 3DS's SD card. And with these files in place, our initial prep work is ready. So we're gonna go ahead and eject the SD card from our computing device of choice and put it back into our 3DS. So from here, get that SD card inserted back into your 3DS. You can put the back plate back on if you want to, you don't really need to. And then take your easy flash parallel and get it inserted into your game card slot. And now we can begin trying to exploit our system with our magnet, but if you don't know exactly where you need to put it, it's a good idea to just kind of turn the system back on for a moment and position the magnet where the exploit will be triggerable while leaving the X button pressable as well as the start button. So this is going to be a bit weird depending on your magnet. So. If I put mine about there, it works. The only magnet I had that worked is one of my kids play toys, so I try to find one that would be a good shape to do this with. But as you can see, the system is in sleep mode. If I remove the magnet, there we go. So that is the positioning that will work for me. Again, do this with your own magnets and try to figure it out. But from here, you can 
turn the system off. But now we need to trigger our exploit by holding start, select, X, and the power button all at the same time. And this is going to be a bit difficult with one hand, so... And if you were successful at holding all the buttons, you can remove the magnet because you are now on the safe boot 9 strap installer menu. So on the top screen, you will get a input code to proceed installing the exploit. So just go ahead and press the D-pad in the following directions. And it will back up your firmware. And once you get the SIGHAX firm install success confirmation, press A to continue. Just go ahead and hold down the power button on your 3DS until the system turns off. Now go ahead and take the SD card out of your 3DS system once again and move it back onto your computing device. With your 3DS's SD card back in your computing device of choice, we're going to delete the boot.firm file. And now we're going to open up that Luma 3DS folder that we had downloaded earlier and put the boot.firm file from here into the root of our 3DS's SD card. And with these in place, go ahead and close everything out, eject your SD card, and put it back into your 3DS. So once again, get the SD card inserted into your 3DS, put the backpack on it if you want to. You don't need the Easy Flash Parallel inserted anymore, but you don't really need to take it out. I'm just doing so just because. But go ahead and power on the 3DS. And you should be brought to the Luma 3DS configuration settings. And so there's a lot of different settings in here. I'm not going to cover what they do in this guide. They're kind of advanced settings. So you would want to do your research on what each of them do. So with everything as it is now, you can just scroll down to save and exit and press A. And with that, your 3DS is now booted into custom firmware, so let's get some fun stuff installed on here real quick. So I'm just going to power it off one more time. And take the SD card out. So to finalize our custom firmware install, we are going to be using the scripts from the wonderful 3DS Hacks Guide team, because it installs everything you're going to need for the best 3DS experience. So to do this, we're going to download the finalizehelper.firm and the finalize.romfs. Again, links to these will be in the description below. With these downloaded, we're going to put finalize.romfs right into the root of our SD card with boot.firm and boot.3dsx. Next, we're going to open up this new Luma folder that was created, and we're going to make a new folder in here named payloads. We're going to open up that folder and put finalize underscore helper.firm right inside. And with that, we can close out of everything and get the SD card put back into our 3DS. So again, 3DS SD card back in. And now you can actually close the back cover on a new 3DS and screw it back down because the script is going to install an FTP server, so you don't have to remove that anymore if you don't want to. From here, go ahead and get your 3DS booted back up. And the first thing we're going to do is make sure that the system is fully up to date. So you can head into your system settings, head to other settings, and perform a system update. If your system's already up to date, you can just skip over this part. This one already is up to date, but I'm just going through it to show you the steps anyway. So okay, there we go, this system is up to date. Awesome. Next, we are going to hold down our left shoulder button, D-pad down, and select. And that will bring up the Rosalina menu here. So inside the Rosalina menu, head down to Miscellaneous Options and press A. Now from here, navigate to Dump DSP Firmware, press A, and once you see the confirmation menu, just go ahead and press B. Now navigate up to Nullify User Time Offset, press A again, and once you see the confirmation, go ahead and press B, and then press B again. And then you can press B one more time to exit out of this menu, and then we're just going to turn the 3DS off. So just power it off like you normally would. Now with your system powered off, hold down the start button and turn it back on. And that'll launch the finalizer helper setup script, which is going to install a bunch of nice programs for us, including God Mode 9, FBI, 
FTP programs, homebrew menu, all the good stuff. But when you're brought to the Godbow 9 screen, it's going to say you don't have the essential backups made. So create one now, press A for yes, and once it's done, press A to continue. Once you are in the Godbow 9 screen that looks something like this, press the home button on your 3DS. And on the bottom screen, you'll see a number of options. So scroll down to scripts and select it. Here we are. And you'll see the script finalize, so press A on this one to select it. And this will begin the finalize script install process, so just go ahead and follow along with the steps, read through them as you see. So once you read through everything, just press A to continue. Input the D-pad combo when it appears. And this process can take up to 15 minutes as it said, so just be patient with it while it does its thing. When the backup completes, you'll see a setup complete screen that looks like this and a prompt to press A to reboot your system. So just go ahead and do so. So from here, you can just go ahead and power on your 3DS. Don't be holding any additional buttons. And once the system is booted, you'll see new software has been added to your home menu. So here we go. We now have access to a 3DS theme manager. FBI, this is used to install CIA titles, so if you want to back up your games and run them directly from the system's SD card, you can install them with this. FTPD, so this is an FTP server to use on your 3DS, so you don't have to take that SD card out of the system anymore. Homebrew Launcher. Universal Updater, this is essentially like a homebrew store you can download a bunch of homebrew and update stuff that you already have, including your Luma custom firmware. And then Checkpoint, this is a 3DS save file manager, so you can back up saves, restore saves, different things like that, so it's really fun. But the last thing that is really recommended to do with your setup is to back up those NAND dumps that God Mode 9 just created for us. So I'm going to do that with FTPD right now. So it creates a FTP server for you to access. So just make note of the IP address and the port number. And now on a computing device of choice, you can load up an FTP server. If you're on Windows, you could just use the Windows browser to make things simple. So you could just type in FTP colon slash slash, and then type in the IP address of your 3DS. Followed by that port number with colons. And there we go, there is my 3DS's SD card. So we're gonna back up our dumps. So they're in the GM9 folder that was created here, backups folder. So we're just gonna go ahead and grab the backups folder and copy it over to our computer for safekeeping. And because we are using FTP in this example, it might take a while. If you take the SD card out of your 3DS and put it into your computer, it'll be a lot quicker. 3DS has pretty bad Wi-Fi, but some of you might prefer convenience. Once that backups folder has been fully transferred over to computer, go ahead and save it into multiple locations for safekeeping in case anything ever happens to your 3DS, you have this backup to restore it. But from here, you could go into the backups folder and delete both of the sysnand files to save some space on your SD card. And done. And with that, your 3DS is now in a fully custom firmware mode and you can begin enjoying all the things that custom firmware has to offer, such as backing up your 3DS titles and saves, to use an emulation or on the SD card through the system itself, as well as numerous other functions and homebrew and emulators and all that good stuff. So one last thing I'm gonna cover in this tutorial is how to use FBI to install one of your backed up games. There will be a 3DS game dumping guide on this channel, and the link to that will be in the description below when it is ready. As of recording this, I haven't created it yet because I wanted to make this tutorial first. So here I have my backed up copy of Ocarina of Time. And again, it needs to have an extension of CIA. And I'm going to keep using FTP for this for simplicity's sake, but I'm just going to go ahead and create a new folder on my SD card. And I'm going to name it CIA, so that way I know everything in here is just to be used to install stuff. You, can, you don't need to do this, it's just something I like to do personally. But I'm just going to drag Ocarina Time right on in. Now that that file transfer is complete, just going to open up FBI here. And on the main menu, I'm going to select SD. And now I'm going to scroll down to that CIA folder I created. And I'm going to select my Zelda back up here. And just press A 
and then I'm going to tell it to install and delete the CIA so that way I don't have the file on here twice essentially and then confirmation A and now just gonna wait for it to do its thing and once the install is finished you can press any button for OK and then when you go back to your home screen you'll be greeted by the new software menu Oh, there we go, Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time 3D. And then you can confirm that it works. And there we are. There is my backed up copy of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D running from our newly modded 3DS with no game card inserted. And the stores are shut down, so I obviously didn't just buy it. So there you have it, the easy process of hacking any 3DS system using the Easy Flash Parallel. While there are numerous methods of hacking 3DS systems, this one is nice to cover because it again works for every model of 3DS, whereas old 3DS and new 3DS have different methods for hacking, using other methods. But I hope you have found this guide informative, and if you happen to own an Easy Flash Parallel, enjoy the extra functionality that it provides. But that does it for this one, so as always, the usual favors here at the end. Thumbs up, thumbs down, depending on how much you like this guide, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads always coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel, please be sure to check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Every little bit helps keeps us going and bringing more content just like this to all of you. Big shout out to all of our current backers. You continue to be amazing. Thank you for being such champs. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we will see you back next video.